All right, everybody, we're back here. So one of the first things probably that you learned in corner geometry is that whenever you have parallel lines, they always have the same slope, right? They, they always told you that they know that you knew that lines had the same slope here. But I would say I'd be pretty confident in saying that not a lot of you know why that's the case here. So we're going to make a bit of a claim here. Now that we know that, you know, now that we have a bunch of geometry on our about, we're going to show that this statement is indeed true. So our theorem here is that two lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So first off, note the if and only if part. So this is a biconditional statement, okay? So note that this theorem is a biconditional statement here. Now I know, realize that this is not a definition despite the fact that it is biconditional, but just because you're a biconditional doesn't necessarily mean you're a definition here. So this turns out to be two theorems in one. There are actually two directions to worry about. We're going to show that if two lines are parallel, then they must have the same slope. And we're also going to show the converse of that. If two lines have the same slope, they must be parallel here. So I'm going to go ahead and show why this is the case here. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one at a time. In fact, I'm actually going to do the reverse uh, the reverse direction first, uh, so the backwards definition here. And you'll see why here in a bit. So basically, the idea is that we're going to be given, we want to be given here that... Um, two lines with the same slope okay I want to show lines are parallel okay so we're gonna go ahead and sketch this out here I'm gonna see what this is going to. so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a nice large picture here so we can see what's going on and we're gonna have two lines that look like this okay There we are. Here are our two lines like this here. Let me call the lines here K and L, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is, so what we're gonna be given, so we ha we're given here that the slope of K equals the slope of L here. And I wanna show that K is parallel to L. Now, a bit of a strange piece of information we're given. We're given slopes of the same here. Now, because we're given the fact that slopes are the same, remember that slope is just rise over run here. So that means we need to introduce a rise and a run into the picture here. So this is what I'm going to do. Since I want to rise or run, those are per that's horizontal and vertical line here. So I see I've got a strip of, you know, I've got a region between these two. So let me go ahead and just go, let me go ahead and draw a horizontal right here. So here's a horizontal like this. Let me call this point here A and B. And since we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, rises, which are perpendicular to runs, let me go ahead and sketch this up here as well. So I'm going to do vertical lines like this here. Okay, so the blue lines I've drawn in here. AB is a horizontal line that's connecting two points, one on line L, one on line K. And I'm sketching two lines here. I'm picking a point C such that AC is perpendicular to AD. And then B, uh, DB is perpendicular to DC here. Sorry about that. My B does not look very good. Okay. So now I have to just show that these lines are parallel. All right, well, you know, this looks just like a, you know, a synthetic geometry problem here. All I, if I want to show that lines are parallel, I'm going to have to try to find some angles here. In particular, we can try to focus on this pair of angles here. If I can, these appear to be alternate interior angles, and if I can show they're congruent, that's great. Now, note that in this situation, let's go back to this. The fact that the slope of K is equal to the slope of L. Now, remember that slope is rise over run here. So slope of K, line K here, the rise is how far the line goes up. And it's pretty clear here that in this situation, we just ignore the top one here and just focus on this triangle here. We see that the rise is CA here. So I can write this as AC and the run is AB here. And the slope of line L, we can ignore the bottom here and look at the top triangle here. We have AB and AD here, AB and BD here. So we can see that the rise in this case is BD and the run is AB here. So notice that in this situation, our first thing here is we have this. We have AC over AB equals BD over AB. We can clearly multiply both sides by AB here, and we get the fact that AC and BD must be the same, which means that gives us this. So it's pretty clear here. I've got AC and BD being congruent here. I've got these two right angles from our construction, and it's pretty clear that AB is congruent to itself. So it looks like similar triangles are going to be the case here. So it looks like here we can now therefore conclude that triangle CAB is congruent the triangle DBA by side angle side here, right? So we have side angle side here. That guarantees us this allows us to conclude that angle DAB is congruent to angle uh, CBA here, right? Because they're corresponding parts. 
And then finally, that gets us to the parallel lines that we wanted. That tells us that line L and line K are parallel. So that indeed shows this first direction here. So we've shown the backwards direction of this. Now, this seems to be a pretty airtight argument here, but of course you have to be kind of careful because, you know, there may be certain corner cases in this here. And this is actually really true for any sort of argument you're creating, whether it's in mathematics or other places here. This is, you can all, you have to worry about corner cases. There may be situations where you cannot do this. And I think you can probably, you know, I'd like you to think about it for a bit. Where can you not do this construction here? One thing where you can't do this is if you have horizontal lines, right? If K and L are horizontal, there's no way to, cons to pick a point on one on one line, one on the other. That's a horizontal. But that's okay, because we know that horizontal lines, by definition, have slope zero, which means they're already, you know, they have the same slope. They're already parallel. Horizontal lines, by definition, are parallel. They already have the same slope here, right? The same is true of vertical lines here. You can do the same thing as well. You can sort of do the same sort of argument here and see what you can come up with. So again, you have to worry about the corner case here, but as long as the lines are not horizontal or vertical, you can do something like this here. All right, now, our proof isn't finished yet. We actually have to go the other direction. We also have to show this direction here. We have to show the forward direction. So now we're gonna do this backwards here. We're gonna be given the fact that lines are parallel and I want, to be, I want to show that the lines have the same slope. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this here. So again, we're gonna go ahead and sketch this out and see what's happening here. So we have this here, do this again. We're gonna go ahead and sketch this out here. So I'm gonna draw the picture again like so. Note that even though the pictures are going to be pretty close to sem the same, we have a slightly different situation now. We're going to be given the fact that uh, K and L are parallel. And now I want to show that they must have the same slope here. So the fact that the lines are parallel means that, okay, there's a bunch of things that we can do here. So I want to show the slope of K equals the slope of L here. All right. Now, note that in our picture up here, we had to create, you know, uh, we had to create horizontal and vertical lines to do rise of a run here. So, you know, it seemed to work out really well. We might as well do the same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and do pretty much the same setup here. Now, note that our argument is going to be slightly different here because of the fact that we have some information that's different, but that's okay. I'm going to do the same sort of setup here. Yet again, we'll do this. So just like before, our picture looks like this here. We're going to create a horizontal line, A, B, like this here, and we're going to pick a point C on K. So it's that AC is perpendicular to AB, and pick a point D on AB, uh, sorry, line L, so it's uh, DB is perpendicular to AB. Okay, now, since we're given that the lines are parallel, right? So let's go ahead and mark that. Since the lines are parallel here, well, parallel lines, you can, if you recall, have congruent alternate interior angles. So we know that these two angles here must be congruent, right? Angle DAB and angle CBA are congruent here, right? Now, note that in this situation here, AB, you can see, is congruent to itself, just like before. So you're going to see, the nice part about these sorts of proofs is that you can do a lot of the same things here. So we have this sort of thing, and note that we have the angles here. So now, and yet again, we have a set of congruent triangles. But except, notice that here, it's slightly different here. We still have CAB's congruent angle DBA, uh, sorry, triangle DBA here, but this time it's different here. If we look at our picture on top, we saw that it was congruent by side angle side based on the information we had. Here, the information we have tells us something slightly different here. In this situation, this is going to be true by angle side angle, right? It's because we have the two alternate interior angles, the two right angles, and the AB in between. So this allows us to conclude here that, you know, since we have congruent, you know, since we have congruent triangles, we can have congruent corresponding parts. So what we want to focus on here are AC and BD. So we can conclude that AC here is congruent to BD by corresponding parts. So these have to match. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's see here. Again, just like before, we saw that the slope of line K, right? Slope of line K was again AB. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. AC over AB here. And the slope of line L is BD over AB here, right? Now, they both have the same, uh, they have both the same denominator, so that means the runs are the same. So we just did show the rises are the same. But how fortunate already that we have AC's congruent to BD. So this means, so notice how here we have the same, uh, the same rises, and then this is the same run. 
So it's pretty clear to see here that we can just do a quick substitution thing. AC over AB, BD over AB, BD can be swapped with AC here. And therefore these, AC over AB, BD now becomes AC, so I can swap that in. And we know that's a true statement here. So indeed, now we know that the lines must have the same slope.